Good morning. Welcome to Training Hour. I'm Reema Tanduka. With me are Pavitra. <laughs> Pavitra, <laughs> what happened, Reema? <laughs> Go ahead, guys. Oh my God! I just let's, let's just stay with Reema. <laughs> Who will wait, Reema? <laughs> this is when Prashant and I didn't even say anything just to add in to the situation. <laughs> But we hi, Prashant. <laughs> we're waiting. <laughs> oh, God, I the camera. Right, we'll, 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 give, we'll give Reema a, a bit of a, a break while she recovers. I don't know. Uh, and probably share the joke with all of us as well. I mean, 200 points lower is what the Nifty is uh, at right now. So it's a sharp cut, 18,223. Uh, and uh, I think the catalyst, basically, uh, and maybe we'll have to sort of analyze this more, but uh, it seems like the catalyst was that big, uh, the big decision out of Bank of Japan, uh, you know, in terms of uh, increasing the band in which it will allow the Japanese bond uh, to trade. I mean, uh, it's it's kind of uh, made that higher. Uh, so the Japanese uh, uh, can, the bond, the 10-year bond can trade up to 0.5%. I think it's already moved up to about 0.4%. Consequently, the yen has seen a very large move. The yen against the dollar is appreciated by 3%. That's a dollar yen, so the dollar is lower, the yen is higher, uh, and it sent the uh, Japanese stock market uh, lower as well. So it's a pretty fascinating, interesting uh, sort of uh, subject, what's happened in Japan. Uh, we typically refer to, you know, uh, I remember people like Manish Chokani, et cetera, have come and said, uh, you know, you don't want a ja the Japanification or whatever you call it, right? Yeah. The Japanese deflation for 30 years, you don't want that. You never want to get into that kind of a trap. Uh, so, you know, there are there are elements of that to it. Even in Japan, after 30 years, you've got inflation. The core inflation has reached 2%. Yeah. So inflation reaching the shores of Japan and the Bank of Japan reacting. Uh, and, uh, you know, you've got uh, this uh, reaction coming through on the uh, yen, the Japanese bond market, and so on and so forth. So that's the topic of discussion here over the next you know, so what so. actually surprised the market is the timing of it. Yeah. So Japanese governor Kuroda's term comes to an end in April of 2023. And under his watch, we've seen Bank of Japan maintain an ultra-loose accommodative stance. So everyone thought that at least till April 2023, that still, uh, you know, the governor Kuroda is in power. He is the governor of Bank of Japan. We're not going to see any change in that. And all expectations of any form of tightening, tweaking would happen post that in the second half of calendar year. So the fact that it's happened under his watch in uh, this December policy, which was expected to be such a non-event, has actually come in as a big surprise for the markets and that's <clears throat> spoke the market rattled them as well you know the uh, dollar yen prior to the announcement was at 137.5 so we've seen an appreciation of nearly three percent the high on the dollar yen was 151.9 this was the 52 week high so from that level of course we've seen a very sharp appreciation in the yen but today itself Post this announcement, post this effective tightening that we've seen uh, from Bank of Japan, uh, we have seen the yen appreciate by nearly 3% and the index fall, that's uh, the Nikkei fall, close to about 3 or percent. The street is going to be watching for, is there now a chance of a rate hike in 2023, especially under the new governor? And there is going to be that press conference as well that we will be tracking. And will there be any change in the commentary, right? Will Bank of Japan adjust its easing bias in the forward guidance? Uh, and that's also something that the street will be tracking. So this is, of course, the big news that's happening globally. It was expected to be a very, very quiet day. Yeah. Uh, the opening was mildly lower, and then you had that sharp fall in the, you know, the first one hour of trade. And since then, markets have been trading with cuts of close to about one hour percent. So 200 points gone in the Nifty now. Just when you were saying that global markets should be quiet till the end of the year, no major <laughs> cues. But yeah, we're pretty much at the day's low for our own markets as well, trading with over a percent in terms of a cut for the frontline indices. The mid-cap index is also suffering a 1% cut right now. The banks around 7 tenths of a percent lower. Uh, it is the PSU bank stocks which are, you know, contributing more to the fall. So a few of those will come up for you. You have the metals also, which are seeing a bigger, you know, chunk in terms of losses. So these are some of the top losers on the Nifty up on your screen. Uh, on the downside, you're also seeing a lot from the real estate pack, sugar stocks, which had run up a lot today, correcting significantly. Uh, the space where you're seeing a little bit of green is the fertilizer name, so that uh, a few of those will also be up. That's what's going on with the market action. We're going to come back to this, but before that, let me run you through everything that we have planned for you on the show today. The market dips after a weak start. Mid-caps fare just a little bit better. Autos and realty lead the slide. We'll discuss the way forward for the market with Srinivas Rao of PGIM India Mutual Fund. A whole host of stocks are in focus in the back of fresh news flow. We'll get you details on Gale, Hinduja Global and Dabur on the show. 
and sugar stocks have been clocking in sweet gains as the government slashes GST on ethanol meant for blending to 5%. Vijay Banka, the MD of Dwarakesh Sugar, will be joining us to discuss the latest move as well as the outlook for the company. So all of this and lots more coming up for you over the next 60 minutes. Okay, well, it's a very uh, top-down uh, kind of market uh, sell-off that we're seeing, but there are individuals.